Welcome back to the Hoosier and Yanks, where we talk everything Canada soccer and U.S. soccer. Tonight we'll be talking about the CONCACAF Gold Cup match between the USA and Haiti. And this one ended in 1-0 for the Yanks. They do get the win. However, I'm going to go into detail on how they got it, how I feel about it, and what this means going forward. But let's go into the starting lineup. The USA played a 4-3-3 formation, my, for my favorite. Um, with Matt Turner at the back, Shaq Moore, Walker Zimmerman, um, Matt Rod was it um, Robinson, Sam Vines in the back line, and then your midfield you have Kevin Acosta, Jackson Ewell, Sebastian the Jet, and then in the top you have Paul Ariola, Josh Zardes, and Jonathan Lewis. And then without further ado, we get right into the game. And four minutes in, uh, Haiti always Haiti already has the first strike. As uh, Derek Etienne Jr. has a tries to have right full of shot, but he misses wide. And then two minutes later, in the sixth minute, USA gets a corner kick. Um, it's hit off the post by Walker Zimmerman, but it's rebounded by him again. But it's saved again by the keeper and cleared away. And then in the eighth minute, a cross comes in from Shaq Moore, and it's beautiful too. Beautiful cross comes in for Shaq Moore. It slides through everyone, but Zardes flicks it up, tips it high for Sam Vines, and he nods it home. 1-0 for the Yanks. And then the 12th minute, we have Paul Ariola goes down and is an injury. We have an injury concern, mass major injury concern here for the USA. And um, we know he has a history of injuries. As he, I think he tore his ACL playing for his club side. He was out last year again. Um, after, and I think, the Gold Cup before this one, he someone else injured him in a nasty foul. Um, it's just he's had a history of injuries, and that's unfortunate. And hopefully he gets better. I think they said there's something going on with his hamstring. So hopefully he can recover from that. But smart move here from the USA not to play him for the rest of the game as um, Nicholas Giacchini will come on and take his place. And then in the 20th minute, Haiti has another great look um, as the USA is caught lacking in transition on defense. As Derek Etienne Jr. also tries to rifle another shot, but it hits a side netting. And once again, we, we're back to the what I, we talked about before. I know this is a different U.S. squad, but here, once again, the same issue comes up, and that's defending in transition. And that's got to be talked about, but we'll talk about that later. 36 minutes, Shaq Moore is in. He shoots, but it's saved by the keeper. But it's ruled offside anyway, so it wouldn't have counted. But, I mean, if it was on, you still got to finish those. I mean, you need everything against Haiti. But then the 45th plus um, the second minute of stoppage time, Sebastian Legette sends a beautiful cross in for Walker Zimmerman, but it's a beautiful save from the keep, from the Haitian keeper. And then we go into halftime with it's 1-0 USA. But in here, the Yanks are really struggling to finish and create great chances overall. But we got to give right now give, give credit to Haiti for taking the fight to them, just like Trinidad and Tobago did to Mexico. Proven that we're not gonna back down. We're not gonna we're not gonna lay down and like a dog and just take it. Credit to Haiti. I mean, it's good good that they brought the fight to this USA team in many ways. You know, it's good to be tested. And then also a couple warning shots for the United States too, as Haiti would also fire a couple shots over the bow. And um, but the USA would hold strong in the moment and continue playing on. Then we go to the fiftieth minute where Haiti sends a ball in for Antoine, but. He hits it right at Matt Turner. Not really a threat. 54th minute, Nicholas Giacchini has a long strike from distance, but it's hit off the wide, off the side of the post. And then, once again, the 66th minute, Giacchini again. Wide open net. He does the hard work. Um, great pass from Zardes. He's breaking away. One-on-one. -on -one, gets past the keeper. Slide tries to aim for the far post. Wide open, guys. It's wide open. He hits the side of the post. This should have been 2 nil for the USA. Come on, you gotta do better than that. 76 minute. John Luca Busio has his own strike from distance as he's egged on by the crowd too in his home stadium for sporting Kansas City. Um, he's egged on the shoot. He does try his luck, but it's saved by the keeper. It's rebounded by Daryl Dike, but it's saved again by the keeper. And yeah, the crowd was chanting his name for Busio. They wanted him on. Um, he was he got he made his debut, so congrats to him. But unfortunately, he did not find his first goal. But that's okay. Um, he almost had a banger though. If this if the keeper did not see this coming, but beautiful save from the Haitian keeper. Give credit where it's due. 
and the game goes on, and then finally all all kinds of chaos in the in the ninety third minute or the third minute of stoppage time as Haiti basically sends a ball in. Matt Turner tries to save it, and he gets bumped out the way by a Haitian attacker. I mean, the play goes on. There's not even a foul called, and there's just a big scramble in front of the net. Uh, USA can't clear. Haiti tries to rifle another shot, and he's hit off a U.S. defender, and John Luca Busi eventually clears it away. But what happened? I mean, the U.S. I mean, not the U.S. It's not the U.S. fault that this happened, but the ref. Come on. I mean, where's the? What happened to goalkeeper interference or obstruction? I mean, the keep Matt Turner literally gets bumped out the way, and play goes on. Come on, ref. You got to call keeper interference. Um, I thought that was bizarre. He let that play on. I mean, the announcer said maybe he'll let that play on. And if it does go into the back of the net, they'll use VAR. But, I, no, you got to call it when you see it. I mean, it'll save a whole lot of time if you call it right there and have to go find a VAR to prove, to prove if you're wrong. So I disagree on that. Ref got to make the call. I mean, 10 out of 10 times. You got to protect the keeper. I mean, that's important. But the final score, I mean, that's it. The USA narrowly escapes with a 1-0 lead. It wasn't a, I mean, it, was, it wasn't a great performance, but the, they got the result. Um, and here's how it looks in the group. It's Canada on top of by goal differential with three points. Although um, it's plus three for them on goal differential. The USA with three points, but plus one for them. And then Haiti. Um, they're third under the USA with minus one with no points, and then Martinique is last with minus three with no points. So that's how that looks right now in the lives in the group standings. But we go to our stats, and um, USA shoot outshoots um, Haiti thirteen to ten. There's thir out of those thirteen, five of those shots are on target, while three of the ten for Haiti are on target. 64% possession for the USA, Haiti's 36%. Uh, 594 passes completed to Haiti's 345 passes. Then, the United States has 89% pass accuracy to Haiti's 82% pass accuracy. 14 fouls apiece. Two yellow, two yellow cards for the United States to one yellow card. you got to be careful on those yellow cards because there is yellow card accumulation in this group stage at least. Um, no red cards. Four offside for the United States to none for Haiti, and five corners to none for the USA. And, um, yeah, like I said earlier, it wasn't pretty. I mean, it was another CONCACAF type of win. And just, I mean, it, I don't know, I mean, I don't know how to put it. It, just, it was another gutsy, gritty, ugly win. I mean, I knew Haiti was going to be a challenge for us, too, especially with the kind of squad the USA was bringing into this tournament. Um, we knew it was gonna. It was. They was. This wasn't gonna be a three zero, four zero. Although it could have been if the USA could have capitalized on a couple chances. Whatever they didn't, we look at what, what what we have in front of us. Haiti took it to us once again. Give credit where it's due. Haiti took the fight to the USA. This squad really tested them, which is good for them. It really exposed a lot of issues that I was not pleased with when I saw this. But I'll talk about that later, but I'm only going to talk about one of those issues rather than just a heap of issues, just to save time. Um, and hopefully they'll get cleaned up against the next game against Martinique because uh, they're not a team to sleep on either. This whole group is not a team. This whole group is challenging, but I'll talk more about why you know this group may be a challenge for the USA. But yeah, give credit to Haiti for making the USA grind this one out. Um, I knew this was going to be a challenge. Um, Martinique is going to do the same. Canada is definitely going to do the same if Haiti did this. So it's going to be tough. But keep in mind, um, in this game, both teams had all kinds of new players. So Haiti um, lost five of their starters due to COVID-19 protocol. They had, had COVID, and so they weren't able to train together. So the team that they put out in the field tonight was literally like they've never played together or they didn't. That was their first game together, so the chemistry... Where nothing was really there for them, and they looked pretty good. I mean, I gotta say, they at times they took they tried to counterattack, but I mean, didn't work. But for defensively, they were solid. And then the USA bringing it that's in a majority MLS side into this one wasn't pretty. As I said, neither team was pretty. Neither team also didn't have their main players. But um, for USA, they gotta clean this up. They gotta clean a lot of stuff up. 
I mean, a one no one win over Haiti. I mean, that's it's not disappointing, but I mean, uh, it's just tough to swallow. I mean, they did get the result, but I kind of wish it, they would should have been two zero just to get insurance. And plus, you're trying to look at goal differential if you're trying if they're trying to win the group, right? You know, whoever winner of the group probably doesn't face Mexico or Qatar or whoever's on that side until the finals. But if you get runner up, you need to have to play uh, face them in that side. But um, yeah, um, there's a lot also to critique here. You know, as I said earlier, a lot to critique. You know, but neither team, or especially the U.S., didn't have their main players, so. I mean, I'm not gonna do it too hard, but I'm def I'm definitely gonna pick one. There was the defense at times was a little sus. Uh, Matt Turner had a moment where he turned the ball or trying to play out the back almost over, and um, God, I mean, Haiti almost capitalized. He was bailed out by a foul, and then the offense just lacked, just lacked, just lots of frustration. I mean. Very seldomly did they create chances tonight, and the chances they did were just mediocre. They weren't, they weren't like the chances I expected them to do tonight. So that's what I'm bummed about, you know. But hey, you can't always expect things to go your way. Um, but yeah, the offense. This was just offense was just shambles. I am disappointed. I'm gonna talk more about the offense soon. That matter of fact, now Daryl DK. I know he didn't come into the second half along with. Um, I mean, Joel Keeney came in the first half, but with Daryl DK on the field, I mean, they played Zardes too, which I was, why? That's my question, why? I, I knew Zard I know Zardes is just, he's a different player when he comes to the U.S. national team, from my opinion. I mean, he's a beast in MLS for, his, for Columbus crew, but when it comes to the U.S. national team, he, he has moments, but majority of those moments are just, just frustrating, like, why? Like, when it comes to some of the shots he has, I mean, they went over, they, some of them sell over the target, or they're just, some of the decisions he makes may be questionable, but if Greg Berhocha wants to use Zardes, then this is what we got to deal with, I guess, and maybe just keep hoping for time to play out, but, I mean, he looked okay. Um, Shaq Moore, another guy, he was um, a winger, you know, he had uh, some chances, he had some good Good stuff, but and also some good defensive rescues too. Um, he looked out. I, at first, I was really not pleased with him, but he led to the setup of the goal. He got the assist, um, and he also made some great defensive plays that might have saved the game for the USA. So, uh, great, great job for him. At first, I was a little disappointed, but he really improved over the game. Um, but the offense has to do a lot better. I mean, come on, Daryl DK barely even touched the ball. I mean, he, when he was in, I mean, he was almost like he was non-existent, except for one time where he had one off the post or one saved away by the keeper. So he didn't really look like his um, Orlando City self, but, I mean, he is on the national team, and the national team is a different game than um, MLS, just like Zardes. So, I mean, we can see that, that there's two different players at the moment, but I think DK will eventually find his form. He did not start this game because of he's going through some, uh, he was a little banged up, and from MLS, so they're trying to rest him as much. So we'll see what he, what happens with the starting lineup is the um, next game. But starting lineup this game, I was a little, a little disappointed with. But these are the players we have, and uh, Greg Berhalter is going to play what he has. And these are he's trying to give. Remember, he's trying to give opportunities for the players to try and make this finalized World Cup qualifying roster in the fall. So this is a this huge thing is a test. Um, but yeah. Um, the reason why this game was scary was this was just one of those games where you can you can dominate. We saw it like yesterday, Trinidad and Tobago, Mexico. You can literally dominate the whole game, right? Although they tied, you can dominate the whole game, possession, do everything right, try and have shots, but you make one mistake and it could cost you. And that's why I was nervous about this whole game. USA, I mean, because Haiti looked to play it on the counter attack and. A couple of times they were they were they looked sharp and they almost scored and they should have scored some couple of times but yeah um, this is just one of those games where you know if you make one mistake it could cost you and that was just I mean like how many scary moments do we have when we playing out the back or lost the ball in the mid and Haiti had a lot of numbers breaking into the mid I mean how many scary moments do we have that was just 
A lot of nervy moments in this game, which I was really nervous about. But, hey, they got the job done. 1-0. We take it. It was ugly. Um, they're going to dissect it later, hopefully, and analyze it and get ready for Martin Meek, which is the next game. But it, it'll do for now. I mean, we can worry about goal difference with probably on Martin Meek if you want to if you at least gonna look in the tie Canada, if you don't wanna if you can't beat them, you at least gotta put put a lot of goals on Martin Meek and hope that Haiti puts up a fight with Canada like they did today with the US. But this whole group for the United States as I said earlier is gonna be tough. Um, you know, Martin Meek and Haiti definitely not teams to sleep on. Martin Meek almost gave Canada a scare as they scored first in the tenth minute, but Canada rallied back four unanswered to win the game. So and remember in 2017, what Martinique almost did to the USA? Yeah. So, you should never sleep on Martinique. And then Canada, of course, they're going to be tough. They're not going to, you know, Canada's on the rise. And they're bringing their A- minus and the team without Davies and David, though. Um, but they're still a good, pretty darn good team in this group and in the tournament. So, you have to look out for them. But, other than the group, you're just going to have to be ready to play. You're going to have to clean up a lot of stuff like, like against this game against Haiti if you're going to want to challenge for the top of the group. It's just that's what it's going to have to take. But we'll, we'll worry about that when we get there. Next up for them is Martinique. And next up for Canada is Haiti. So we'll see what happens next week. But if you like this video, make sure you like, share, subscribe it. Tell all your friends about it and you know let them know about the schedule and what's going on in the Gold Cup. And also tell all your friends that uh, we have some nervy moments today for the USA.